This is your boy, Shaver Speeds, man. Before I can begin start, make sure you guys pound the like button, pound the subscribe button. Also, pound the like and subscribe buttons to my homeboys, the Middle Boy Game, the Eves Game, the game they do live streaming. And also, go ahead and follow their official Twitch accounts. The links to their official Twitch accounts will be in the description box below. They do a lot of fun stuff. They do a lot of gaming. They do a lot of live streaming. You might even catch a boy me kicking some ass alongside them like you did today. Uh, so, I want to get into Snowfall, Season 3, Episode 5, The Bottoms. And I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out, shout out to the entire cast and the production crew of Snowfall for getting renewed for another season, season four. They just, deadline just dropped that uh, about more than a little bit more than 10, 12 hours ago. So congratulations to, you know, the people of Snowfall. But in this episode tonight, it was a little bit less lighter, but we see things kind of shifting in Franklin's um, gear, so to speak, almost, or I should say. The ball is more so now back in Sergeant Wright's court. So basically what I'm saying is it's pretty neutral right now. This episode is pretty neutral. And I say that because both of these titular characters made boss moves. Franklin securing the property and real estate for his mother. And Officer Wright, I'm sorry, not Officer Wright. Yeah, but Sergeant Wright, you know, getting ready to implement his plan to bury Franklin's state as he put it to his partner. Now, this episode started off really pretty light. You know, we see... Teddy and Julia, you know, looking over their plans. They look up on the news and Sergeant writes off on TV talking about how the raids, you know, benefited the, the community of Los Angeles as a whole. And it kind of stuns Teddy. He's wanted. There's a few lawsuits on his name for his excessive force and so on. You know, so they're thinking, wait, 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 they're like, wait, 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 hold up. Andre Wright, this is the same guy that's involved in Franklin Cates. In Franklin Saints case. And so, like I said, he has a few other lawsuits on him as well. And in fact, IA got involved because Sheila, you know, a cousin of Lulu's, you know, did her job. Um, if you guys don't know, Officer Wright was at the bar with his uh rest of his partners. They got pretty they got pretty fucked up, uh pretty pretty tipsy. Uh Sheila goes back to the room, she fixes them a drink, which ends up drugging him, taking his gun and badge, you know, giving it to Franklin. I'm wondering like what the hell would why the hell would Franklin even need the gun in the bags in the first place? I guess just to see you know, how desperate Officer Wright is. To see who the man who he really is without the badge and the gun. Because, you know, the biggest uh, debate amongst, you know, us black people when it comes to our brethren, you know, behind the badge is they ain't shit without the gun and the badge. And so we see um, Sergeant Wright just in shambles because he just got suspended. Because he got drugged, uh, his gun and his badge got taken away not to mention even as his superior was like wait a second so wait what kind of drugs were you guys doing almost like alluded to him actually being on the coke you know that stereotype because they all see it as a, a, a one way anyway but then also you know with him being you know because you know even his uh superior said look we can't be doing favorites around here so we're gonna have to have ia take you up on this ia ends up suspending him you know even the lady was like wait a second you know if anyone else We's had it out for you. And he says, look, I've paid away. I put away a lot of bad people. And so it's only when, you know, he comes home to Melanie, you know, they had a bit of a, a squabble because, you know, he came home late and she was worried about her father. He goes out to get his bags. He sees Franklin. And I think this this is what I hate about Franklin the most. I'd say this, but, you know, everyone has their flaws. And one of the flaws that I will say that's most prominent with Franklin is his arrogance. All he had to do really is just do, give him a little nod and just get in his damn car. But no, this motherfucker had to give him a good-ass fucking grin or a smirk, which prompted him to come into his plan of, you know what, Franklin did this to me. So with that being said, I'm going after his ass for real. We even see him have that bad dream where he's spinning the gun, or Russian roulette style, and then he sees Wright pick up the gun, and he says, wait, and you know, and the gun goes off. And that's Franklin's worst fear. He literally wakes up and shakes and sweats. His mom, you know, she's happy that, you know, she got the property from old boss. You know, which he didn't give up what I was about. He said, look, I love the blacks. I've done a lot for the community. He said, he said you know, he said, he said, oh, snap, sissy. You know, I thought you were going to get your old job. You were going to back for your old job back. She was like, no, Leonard, I work for myself now. He gave him a very kind of saying, oh, I'm so happy for you. You know, that old stick. You know, so when they said, okay, you know what? We want that property. And uh, Leonard, and I've known you for many years. I know that you've painted over the mold, the asbestos. I know you paid off the cleaning crews, and then that way, 
you know, you can still have probably over those buildings, people can move into them unsanitized and someone just to collect the money. And that's, those are losses waiting to happen. And he says, look, I don't, if you don't be so well, says, you know that I don't take well to, I don't respond well to threats. I get the fuck out of my office and this, that, and the third. I'm not going to take any damn money that you guys have. You know, because he made it, he alluded to it. He said, wait, what the hell was that? You guys are the other buyer. You guys are the other buyer. Like, like, like what would you guys stumble upon? Um, a rich uncle or something? A rich, uh, a rich uncle or something? You know, to which Sissy said, yeah, something like that. Frank was like, look, man, we're, we're ready just to give you 50K hands right now. You know, so that way you can just walk away. You can give us the property. So, and here's what I find really interesting. Mr. Leonard, I believe is what his name is. He had plans to stake out and cause harm to Franklin and his family, but that didn't really go so well. Franklin was a step ahead. He literally, those same guys over there that do some damage to Franklin and his family, got fucked up and sent right back to Mr. Leonard's office, bloodied and bandaged up, probably even dead, which left the man shook. Now, mind you, and that's how he was at, because their whole um, motive was to for him to rescind his offer of purchasing that that, uh, that real estate, that piece of property. He did just that. He got so damn shook. He said, look, man, you guys can have it after all. I'm sorry. So, but then also in the episode, we see Teddy, you know, take some insisted cocaine snorts, you know, with his new Colombian contact. Now, the problem with this is the, Mex- the guys, the Mexicans aren't getting their damn product. Which is making them becoming, which is making them very extremely agitated because Teddy's promising them this. But then also, you know, Gustavo, looking at Gustavo, like, hey man, where the hell's the damn product so we can get this stuff going on? I mean, because remember, they want their damn money. And the guy, and you know, Teddy's new supplier is pretty much just snorting the coke up at, you know, at day by day because he doesn't have his damn club. He said, look, you give me my damn club and then I'll make sure those damn drops are put back on. And even Julie was like, wait a minute, so wait, now you gotta, you just did coke against his will, you know, and now Julie has to look into finding a club. So then that way the drops can be back on, which is fucked up in and of itself. Now, mind you, Melanie even has to be dealing with, you know, the, 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 um, the backlash of what her father's doing because she literally can't even go see her damn friends in the projects without getting a beat down because that's exactly what happened to her. She's like, look, I'm not gonna do it. This with you, Sean Sean. Because Sean Sean's uh, older cousin or older brother got arrested by her pops, Melanie's pops. And I don't know why the hell this little girl didn't swing when the girl pushed her. I would have fucking decked her ass, but I understand. So when Melanie, Melanie gets hit, she falls to the ground. Her friend goes in to help her possibly to assist her. I hope she did at least. I mean, that's what her real friends are supposed to do. So we'll see what happens with that. Because, you know, her, um, Sergeant Wright wanted to get her. I had, uh, you know, he wanted to get her by there and he wanted her to go to Spelman ahead of time. Now, I think, and I'm hoping this isn't true. I'm really hoping that Melanie's not hooked on the horse. I'm really hoping that she's not hooked on the damn product. Because it looks like her, her Coke or whatever. I'm hoping that's not the case. And I don't think it is. I seriously do hope that it's not the case. But like I said, you know, Sergeant Wright wants to send his daughter to Spelman ahead of time. You know, stay in the dorms because he knows how it can be given that like i just alluded to earlier in the video that he wants to bury franklin saying he told that to his partner straight up and we even see previews of the next week's episode where we see alton giving his son some very sound advice son this is the federal government once they're done with you they're done with you how do you know that because you know franklin's like you know he's franklin is so assured he's so confident he's like wait a second yeah, he said, said, and what is going to happen when he doesn't need you? Trust me, son, this is the federal government. When they're done needing you, you're, you're nothing to them. And, it's, and he's right. So pretty much what Alvin was telling Franklin was be cautious. Don't be so, you know, don't be so, you know, gung-ho on the fact that, hey, oh, I got this guy. He's, he's, he's got my back, you know, but no, but he's in a more powerful position than he is. And granted, speaking of Reed Thomas, a.k.a. Teddy, there are people that want to kill Teddy. Even Julia, you know, she met up with one of the, I guess one of the agents, I guess, at a, at a local cafe or whatever, or a diner. You know, she used to, was talking about Teddy, how Teddy's the lone wolf, how Teddy's bringing all this dirt on the agency and things of that nature, and they're wanting to take him out. So I think Teddy needs to watch it where is it going to. 
because they want to take him out. You know, they, they consider um, Teddy um, a loose end, so to speak. So I'm really hoping that Teddy, you know, watches his back and so on. You know, then also, you know, Julia's getting rid of you know, the redhead, you know, the DEA agent is looking for his partner because he hasn't heard from her. He said, look, a dedicated DEA agent goes missing. What the hell is going on here? So that's what we get for uh, next week. But then also we see Javi actually possibly being killed because we see Franklin and Leon and Fat, Fat Back draw on his ass. Possibly because they kind of figure out, I guess, that, oh, shit, Javi is with the feds. He works with the damn feds, so he must have got to go or something. Something must have happened to that effect. This has been your boy Sherry Speaks, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, man. This has been your boy Sherry Speaks. Love you guys. Peace and love.